Hi, I am Manoj here and I'm a data scientist. Right. So today's topic of discussion would be on uh, the deep learning concept itself. Again, we are going to discuss about the tools that are being used for the deep learning models implementation as well as the computation that are being done actually. Okay. So we know, of course, the most popular libraries are PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Keras, right? So what we are going to do in this particular session is that we are going to divide and compare all these three tools, right? So we will be basically comparing, we'll be going through the pros and cons of each and every library, and we'll be distinguishing between these three basic tools that are being used in the whole of deep learning itself. Right? Now, having said that, let's get started, okay? Coming to the PyTorch. So PyTorch is an open source library that is basically used in the field of machine learning. So we know that. So PyTorch is also an open source library that is used for the computations of uh, deep learning models that are also used for you know, building the deep learning models in the field of machine learning and AI. TensorFlow is also an end-to-end -end open source deep learning framework wherein it was typically developed by the mighty large company that is the Google organization themselves, right? And it is also being maintained by Google itself. And this TensorFlow edition was released on 2015. Coming to the Keras, so Keras is an effective high-level neural network API, so application programming interface that is typically written in Python. So the architecture behind the Keras library is the Python programming language. So every snippet of, every bits and bytes of the Keras library is being written in Python itself. Okay, so it's an API that is that is running on top of uh, other other programming language. Cool. So PyTorch was typically developed by Facebook, which is now called as Meta. And PyTorch was initially launched in uh, 2016. Okay. So coming to the TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a symbolic math library that is used for neural networks. So in order to compute some of the computation, that is the complex compu computation that that are being processed by the neural net, we typically use TensorFlow itself. Okay. Okay. So Keras typically focus on the modular programming itself. Okay. Then coming to PyTorch. PyTorch is an imperative. Okay. So what it means is that even before executing the code, the PyTorch library is going to assist the user stating that the given snippet of code or the line of code that you have written so far whether it is going to get executed successfully or will it throw an error okay so that that flexibility that editing thing is something referred to as imperative in case of pytorch but coming to the tensorflow of course tensorflow offers humongous wide range of libraries and wide range of functionalities that can be used in building a model from scratch okay but what happens in case of tensorflow is that in order to uh, read and write some of the codes in TensorFlow, there is a proper syntax. And to learn this syntax at the early stage is quite hard. It's, it's difficult, basically. So in order to get used to this syntax, it takes a lot of time. Of course, it offers a lot of ecosystem wherein you can import a lot of functions that are predefined in the TensorFlow itself. right? And you can, you can typically build and deploy the machine learning all the, all the models that you have developed so far and trained so far. But but the only drawback at this point of stage is uh, it is quite hard to come up with the syntax itself. Okay. Coming to the Keras, Keras doesn't handle low-level computation. So yes, of course, it is an API and it is always, a, it, it is more oriented towards user-friendly and modular programming. It does not handle low-level computation. Right? Then, PyTorch provides a similar pace, which is quite fast and suitable for a very high performing tool. Right? So PyTorch acts as a high performing tool wherein you are going to give um, a bundle of data and it is going to process in, in a very fast manner and mostly suitable for high performance. Okay. So TensorFlow also provides a similar pace wherein it is also going to provide a fast as well as the suitable for it is mostly suitable for high performance. Okay. But coming to the Keras, what happens here is the performance in Keras is 
typically slower okay when compared to the pytorch and tensorflow the performance in keras is typically slow pytorch has a complex architecture and the readability of the code is typically less so the architecture that are, that is being designed in order to build this pytorch library itself is is very very uh, you know it is not that easy to read it's a complex one and the code readability of pytorch architecture is typically less when coming to the tensorflow tensorflow is also not that easy to you know use because remember tensorflow offers lot of functionalities it provides a wide range of spectrum wherein users can simply access some of the functionalities in their code itself but the problem here is it is going to provide a humongous amount of such functionalities but it is quite hard for the user without knowing the syntax you cannot basically let's say let's say i want to call some functions without knowing the syntax or without knowing how to interact using the tensorflow that really makes no sense right even though the, there is a bunch of there's let's say there are tons of such functions that are that can be simply you know put in into your snippet of code but without knowing the knowledge of writing the syntax code itself that really doesn't make any sense right so what happens at this point of time is keras has a simple architecture okay keras has a simple architecture and it is more more precise and the codes written are here are crisp and very very precise so it's quite easy to read and the code readability of course will be very high when compared to the pytorch as well as the tensorflow itself okay so pytorch is used for high performance model and of course when you have a large data set pytorch is mostly the preferred because uh, when when user wants to or when a user expects faster execution faster computation for the given problem statement or for the given any functionality pytorch is preferred at that point of place okay so coming to the tensorflow itself tensorflow is also used for high performance model and also the for providing large data sets okay so of course we all know that tensorflow is also used in the field of scientific computation as well as the research it is mostly used in the research part right so of course now we can imagine if there is going to be some sort of research going on then of course it it consumes humongous amount of data and of course every research scientist will be expecting for the faster execution part itself so even tensorflow provides such a faster rate of execution as the user or any research scholar need okay so keras is typically used for smaller data sets okay uh, because it is very very slow when compared to tensorflow and pytorch right it is not a high performing tool it is a slow performing tool that is the reason it 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 takes up only small data set and not the larger one okay so these were the three distinguished points for the pytorch tensorflow and keras library themselves okay so that's it for today thank you